Okay, in this video I'm going to explain how computer input circuits work. Now it's really important to be able to understand these circuits. A lot of people don't, and it makes it virtually impossible to accurately diagnose a circuit if we don't know how much voltage we should expect in a circuit before we start measuring the voltage in that circuit. Basically we could break down a computer into three functions. We have an input signal that comes from a sensor or switch and goes into the computer. That input signal triggers something and the computer begins processing. After the processing, the computer generates an output signal. On this video, I'm just going to talk about the input circuit that makes the input signals possible. So let's look at a basic input circuit on a computer. So here we have a computer or an ECU and we have a switch. The job of this circuit is for the computer to be able to determine whether this switch is opened or closed. And the way it does that is through this circuit. We start with a voltage source. This could be 12 volts, it could be 8 volts. Most commonly on an automotive sensor circuit we use 5 volts. So we have a 5 volt voltage source and then we have a resistor and then it connects to a switch which is grounded when the switch is closed. So that's a complete circuit from 5 volts to ground. And in the middle here we measure or sense the voltage. And as you could guess if you know anything about voltage drop, you know that when this switch is open, no voltage will drop across this resistor, so we would sense or measure 5 volts at this point. However, when the switch is closed, like this, now all of the voltage drops across this resistor, and we have 0 volts from this point on down, so we would sense 0 volts. So that's basically the way that this computer measures or determines whether the switch is open or closed. If the switch is closed, we measure 0 volts. If the switch is open, we measure 5 volts. Now let's modify this just a little bit. This is the same circuit, but instead of having a switch down here, we have a variable resistor. But let's say that this is a thermistor that changes resistance as the temperature changes. The thermistors that we use as sensors in our cars are called NTC thermistors. That means it's a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. That means that as the temperature increases, the resistance decreases. They have an inverse relationship with each other. So if this fixed resistor in the ECU had 10 ohms, and this resistor here at 70 degrees also had 10 ohms, then the voltage would be split equally between the two resistors. I would have 5 volts here, half of that, or 2.5 of the volts would drop across this resistor, and the other 2.5 would drop across this resistor to ground. Now as the engine warms up, the temperature increases and the resistance decreases, so this might only be... 5 ohms now. Now my total resistance is 15 ohms, which means that two-thirds of my resistance is here and one-third of it is here, or two-thirds of my voltage will drop across this resistor and one-third will drop across this resistor. So if I start with 5 volts, I might drop 3.6 volts across this resistor, leaving me with 1.3 volts here, which will drop across this resistor. So if I was measuring this, I would measure the 1.3 volts that was left after going through this resistor. Now let's say that the engine cooled down and we left it outside on a cold night and the resistance increased to 20 ohms. Now two-thirds of my resistance is here and one-third is here. So this will drop a third of my voltage or about 1.3 volts which will leave me with about 3.6 volts to drop at this resistor which means I'll measure 3.6 volts here. That's how this ECU determines the voltage of this sensor and can interpret the temperature of this sensor by measuring how much voltage is dropped by this variable resistor here. Okay, so now let's take this one step farther. This is the exact same circuit, but you'll notice that rather than having a ground down here where we have a chassis ground or an engine ground, now the sensor circuit comes back to the computer. That's done for accuracy. We often don't know what the exact voltage is on the ground, and so to improve the accuracy of this measurement, we bring this back here and the computer can know exactly what the voltage is of this ground, and it can know exactly what the 5 volt reference is. And because it has these two reference points, it can be accurate in determining exactly what the resistance of this sensor is. Now there are two types of input circuits. The one that we've been looking at so far is called a pull-up circuit. And a pull-up circuit is one that starts with a voltage source on the side of the circuit where the voltage is being sensed or measured. And then it uses a ground as a reference on the other side of the circuit. A pull-down circuit is just the opposite of that. 
we just switch these around. Instead of having zero volts and five volts, we have five volts and zero volts. This is called a pull down circuit. The only difference is the voltages will be opposite of each other. For example, in this case, when this resistance increased, more of the voltage was dropped here, meaning we had a higher voltage here. In a pull down circuit, when this resistance increases, more of the voltage is again dropped here, but we're starting with zero volts and we're dropping upwards towards five volts if you look at it this way. Or if you want to go backwards, we could say we start with five volts and drop more of the voltage here. So we end up with a lower voltage here as the resistance increases. Now the other thing you'll notice is if I was to unplug this sensor from the circuit and remove it, this would default to five volts in this case. In a pull down circuit, if I unplug the sensor, it would default to zero volts. So you might be asking, well, how do I know in a car which type of a circuit I'm dealing with? I don't usually get to see this in my wiring diagram. So I'll give you three ways that you can tell whether you're dealing with a pull up or a pull down circuit. Number one is look at your wiring diagram. There is a possibility that you'll see this. And even if you don't see this, you may get other information that's helpful. For example, here's a wiring diagram for a fuel gauge circuit. You'll notice that here is the variable resistor circuit. Here's the input circuit. It doesn't show us the resistor or where it's sensing, but we know that this is the sense wire. So we can assume that right here, we've got a resistor, right? And this is where the voltage is being sensed right here. Well, to find out whether this is a pull up or pull down circuit, simply go to the other wire and it tells us this is a five volt reference. Because we have five volts here, we know that to complete the circuit, we have to have a ground here. Because we have a ground on this side, this is a pull down circuit. If I was to unplug this sensor from the circuit, this would default to zero volts. Another way that I can tell what type of a circuit I have here is that I can connect a scan tool to the vehicle and I can look for the PID that gives me the voltage of this sensor. And then I can go disconnect the sensor. As I unplug the sensor, this one of course will default to five volts. This one will default to zero volts. That's another way to find out. A third way is I could measure the voltage at the wires to the sensor. So here's a picture of a two wire sensor. So I would find these two wires and I would probe and measure the voltage on each one of these. So if this was my voltmeter here and I have one lead on the ground and I place the other lead on one of the wires coming out of the sensor, one of these wires would measure something between zero and five volts, not zero volts and not five volts because I have to drop some voltage at each of the resistors and I'm measuring in between the two. So something in between, maybe 2.1 volts, for example. Now, when I move my lead to the other wire coming off of this sensor, I'm going to measure either zero volts or five volts. In this case, I'm going to measure zero volts. And because I get zero volts, I have a zero volt reference over here. I know that I have a pull up circuit. If I had measured over here on this wire coming off of here, I would end up with five volts, which tells me that I have a pull down sensor. Here, I would again measure something between zero and five, but not zero and not five. So those are three ways that you can use to tell what type of a sensor circuit you're dealing with, even if the diagram doesn't directly tell you this. Okay, now just briefly, I want to discuss three wire sensors because you've probably seen that many of the sensors on our vehicles have three wires. If you look, we still will have either a pull up or a pull down circuit. What kind of a circuit is this? Because we have a ground or zero volts on the sensing side of the circuit, this is a pull down circuit. And in most cases, the other two wires are a five volt reference and a ground. And if we start at this side and we have a five volt source, some of the voltage will be dropped here and some of the voltage will be dropped here and we're measuring in between. As this resistance increases, I will drop a greater percentage of the voltage here, leaving with less voltage to be sensed and to drop across this resistor. Now let's take a quick look at an example. Here we have a horn circuit where you can see that we have a horn switch, a body control module or computer here, an ECU that controls a relay which turns on the horn circuit. So let's take a look at how this works. This is the input circuit here. Now it doesn't tell us. We can't see what's going on inside of here, but we know that we have a resistor and we can look at this and because the other end of the circuit terminates in a ground, we know that we have a voltage source such as five volts or 12 volts up here. And then right here is where this voltage is sensed. So if this switch is open, I would read five volts here. 
which basically triggers this body control module to process and tells it that it's time to generate an output signal on this wire. We'll talk about output circuits in another video, but I wanted to show you this example because this is a real wiring diagram. Here's another circuit. This is a circuit for a radiator fan. This fan is turned on when this relay switch closes, and the relay is controlled by a powertrain control module. And right here we have an engine temperature control sensor. So this is a thermistor like the one we discussed earlier. Now as we come over here, we don't know whether this is a pull up or pull down sensor immediately. But usually when it says signal or sense, this is the side of the circuit where I will be measuring the voltage. Over here it says sensor ground. So in other words, I know that I have a ground here. And because I have a ground here, I know that I have 5 volts or 12 volts here. Therefore, this is again a pull up circuit. Now here's an example of some door locks. You'll see that here are the door lock motors that are controlled by this computer, the body control module, and the input to the circuit would be these door lock switches. If we look at the driver's door lock switch, for example, when one of these switches closes, it sends a signal here. Is this a pull up or pull down circuit? It doesn't tell us here, but let's go look at the other end of the circuit. Oh, it comes from a voltage source, and because we have 12 volts here, we know that the other end of the circuit needs to have a resistor and a ground with a sensing element right here. So this is a pull down circuit and the computer can tell when either the lock or the unlock switch is pressed. So that's how a basic computer input circuit works. I hope that helps you so that when you diagnose these you can understand how they work and understand why you're seeing the voltages that you're seeing which will make it possible for you to diagnose the circuit accurately.